KSC, Presence. 30 years after a man bumped his head, he solved the mystery of his own missing person case. It's February 2016 and Sylvia Wilson's son Edgar has been missing for 30 years. In 1986, he disappeared from the Canadian city of Kitchener, leaving his mother heartbroken and unsure of his ultimate fate. But now, a man 80 miles away has begun to recall snippets of a previous life, and the decades-old mystery might finally be solved. Born in April of 1965, Edgar, who had the surname Latulip, was troubled from a young age. In fact, he was still just at kindergarten when his mother first began to suspect that something was wrong. But sadly, the boy's wild and hyperactive behavior would turn out to be the least of her worries. Latulip's behavioral problems eventually became too much for Wilson to bear, and the boy was placed in a hospital for children in the Canadian city of Montreal. Additionally, he was given a prescription for antipsychotic drugs. That would prove to be just the start of a difficult journey for the mother and son, however. Over the years, Latulip was placed in a number of different institutions. He continued to struggle with his mental health, though. And according to Wilson, his condition often put a strain on their relationship. I've been through all hell with this guy, she told the record in 2016. When you have a child like this, you don't discuss it with everybody, Wilson continued. It's not everybody's business. People just do not understand, and you're gossiped about. People think you're not a good mother. However, she insists that she has always had her son's best interests at heart. Wilson, in fact, believes that she did everything she could to accommodate Latulip and his complex needs. I was once told by a social worker if other people had a kid like Edgar they'd get out the green bag and just throw him away, she confessed. Like he was human garbage. Throughout Latulip's teenage years, he moved between a number of different hospitals, psychiatric wards and group homes, residential medical facilities that house individuals with complicated care needs. But when he reached adulthood, his mother believes that he slipped through the cracks of the social system. Even as a grown man, it's believed that Latulip, in fact, had the mind of a child. However, with the help of disability benefits he was able to maintain a degree of independence from his mother. And in September 1986, the 21-year-old was renting a room at a group home not far from Kitchener, a city in the southwest of Ontario. Latulip continued to struggle with his mental health, however. And on one occasion, he even attempted to take his own life. Not long after, Wilson apparently visited her son in hospital and was shocked to discover that his weight had dramatically dropped. Even worse, at some point the young man experienced severe medical trauma, suffering from collapsed lungs on two separate occasions. But despite Latulip's struggles, nothing could have prepared Wilson for what was to happen next. On September 2nd, her son left his home in Kitchener, never to return. And knowing that the young man had not been carrying his medication when he departed, his mother grew increasingly concerned about his well-being. Apparently, Wilson began to suspect that Latulip's condition had left him vulnerable to abuse. Had he found himself in a compromising situation that had inadvertently led to his death? Was his body now lying hidden somewhere? Despite the lack of evidence to support her suspicions, the mom came to fear the worst. Meanwhile, police developed their own theory on what might have happened to Latulip. Bearing in mind the young man's previous suicidal behavior, they began to suspect that he had taken his own life. They even suggested that he might have traveled to Niagara Falls, just 95 miles from his Kitchener home. At Niagara, Around 40 people die every year falling almost 170 feet from the famous waterfall. And according to experts, the majority of those are intentional suicides. But even though the authorities suspected that Latulip had become another statistic, there was, again, no concrete evidence to confirm their theory. As the years passed, Latulip's disappearance remained a mystery. Then, in 1993, there was a glimmer of hope. Apparently, a tip came in that the young man had been spotted in Hamilton, 
a city some 40 miles from Kitchener on Ontario's east coast. However, even this lead eventually drew a blank. For 30 years, Wilson had to live without knowing what had happened to her missing son. Then, on February 5, 2016, the telephone rang. On the other end of the line was a police detective, and they had an incredible story to tell. Apparently, Lachalip had been discovered alive, well and living around 80 miles away. But where had Lachalip spent the last three decades and why had he not contacted his mother? According to investigators, the young man really had boarded a bus to Niagara all those years ago. His initial intentions, though, remain unknown. However, it appears that he then chose to travel onwards to St. Catharines, a major city located a short drive northwest of Niagara Falls. Although authorities are not sure about the exact sequence of events, they believe that Lachalip somehow sustained an injury to his head soon after his disappearance. And in the aftermath of this trauma, he apparently lost all recollection of his previous life. With no clue as to his previous identity, the young man was forced to start anew. Apparently, Lachalip remained in the Niagara area, sometimes resorting to a life on the streets. At other times, it's thought that he survived thanks to the assistance of social services. However, details about his new existence remain sketchy, and it's not known whether he ever held down a job or established a family of his own. Then, in January 2016, something changed. According to reports, Lachalip suddenly began to remember snippets of his previous life. And during a discussion with a social worker, he revealed what he suspected was his real name. Pieces of his memory started coming back, the Niagara Regional Police Department's Philip Gavin told the record. After learning Lachalip's real name, the social worker turned to the internet for more information. And they soon realized that the now 50-year-old man was a missing person, his whereabouts apparently unknown for the past 30 years. Amazed, they contacted police who promptly arranged an interview with the mystery man. Down at the police station in St. Catharines, Lachalip took a DNA test in the hopes of confirming his identity. And amazingly, the authorities were able to match it to Wilson, using a sample that she had only submitted a few months before. It would soon be time for the missing man's mother to learn the unbelievable truth. Wilson was happy, excited, overjoyed. Gavin told the Washington Post. After 30 years of not knowing where her son is, knowing that he's alive, she's pretty excited about that. Wilson, of course, was delighted to find that Lachalip was not dead. But the authorities were left baffled by the strangeness of the case. I've been a police officer for 18 years and this is something I've seen on TV but never been a part of, Gavin said in a 2016 interview with Canadian newspaper The Star. Absolutely, this is quite a rare one. Nevertheless, he and his colleagues were delighted that the decades-old mystery had finally been solved. And, it seems, the police weren't the only ones to be delighted. Not long after Lachalip's true identity was revealed, they contacted Lucia Dion. Why? Because she runs a Facebook page publicizing cases of missing people in Ontario. But when she heard that they wanted the Kitchener man's details removed from the site, she could scarcely believe that he had been found. It was not a case that I expected to ever receive an answer about, Dion told CBC News in 2016. I know of some other cases where a long-term disappearance has been resolved and the person has been located and is safe. I can't think of a case where the person has solved their own disappearance or where there has been significant memory loss for three decades. Lachalip's reappearance has certainly given a happy ending to his story. Dion acknowledges, however, that many other families have not been so lucky. Meanwhile, one of the officers who initially investigated the case, Detective Constable Duane Gingerick, has expressed his joy at finally finding closure after all these years. I had hopes that, Lachalip was out there somewhere, Gingrich told the record. For us as investigators, this is great, this is awesome. It's satisfying because most of these cases don't turn out this way. 
you expect the worst when a person is missing for that period of time. Clearly, Lachalip's reappearance has been nothing short of miraculous for everyone involved. Cases like this one, however, are incredibly rare. In fact, even though total amnesia is a plot device commonly used in movies and television shows, in reality, it is very uncommon for a sufferer to completely forget who they are. According to experts, amnesia comes in a number of different forms. And while some sufferers lose the ability to form new memories, others struggle to recall certain information from their past. However, the type of disorder that causes an individual to forget their entire identity is typically known as global amnesia, or a fugue state. Interestingly, there is believed to be more than one cause of amnesia. The condition can, in fact, be triggered by a number of different things. And while a blow or injury to the head can lead to the condition, it can also occur as the result of neurological trauma such as an infection or stroke. However, some experts believe that various psychological factors can also trigger amnesiac experiences. For example, those with post-traumatic stress disorder could experience memory loss. And according to neuropsychologist Jason Brandt, who spoke to CBS News about Lachalip's case in 2016, psychological trauma may have been the cause of the Canadian man's strange disappearance. These cases of people disappearing for 30 years and then waking up and coming to, these are very rare, Brand explained. They're usually people without brain dysfunction, but they're running away from something that is too painful to experience. So could Lachalip's difficult life have led him to abandon it and become someone new? Brandt certainly believes that could be the case. Lachalip is a guy who had a vulnerable brain, he continued. He doesn't have the coping resources that you or I do. When things get rough, the only thing he knows to do is run away and forget. Interestingly, some experts also believe that suicidal behavior and global amnesia are linked, although the exact nature of the connection remains unknown. But even though Lachalip's experience was extreme, it was not completely without precedent. One of the earliest known cases of amnesia, in fact, involved another man who completely forgot his identity. That man was American preacher Ansel Bourne. In January 1887 Bourne left his Rhode Island home to visit his sister in a nearby town, only to find himself traveling onwards to Pennsylvania. There, Bourne apparently forgot all about his previous life. Instead, he began calling himself Albert Brown, even opening a stationery shop under his new identity. Then, two months later, he reverted back to his old persona. And bizarrely, he had no recollection of what he had been doing since leaving his home many weeks before. But while Bourne was only brown for two months, there have been other, far longer, cases of global amnesia. For example, back in 2004, a man with head injuries was discovered in the Georgia city of Richmond Hill. And when questioned, he could not recall simple details like his surname or where he was from. In fact, the man could only recall his first name, Benjamin. And despite mass coverage in the national media, nobody came forward to shed any light on the mystery. Amazingly, it would be 11 years before his identity was eventually discovered, thanks to DNA research that was able to connect him to a relative. However, Benjamin's experience seems to pale in comparison to Latulips, who apparently lost his memory for far longer. In fact, Gavin told the star that the once missing man was struggling to come to terms with his identity after so much time had passed. He's trying to grasp that after 30 years you realize you're somebody else. Apparently, Latulip and Wilson were planning to reunite back in 2016. However, if the mother and son did get together, it's an event that hasn't been covered by the media, and that should perhaps come as no surprise. Apparently, the mom expressed a desire that her son be kept out of the spotlight soon after his reappearance. It's, Lachalip's, story, Wilson told the record. It's great he has been found. But it should be his choice if he speaks to people about what he's been through. He doesn't need a lot of media attention. For now, 
it is likely enough for his family that Lachalip has returned, although the full truth about his missing years might never be known. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.